Teachers, but they're really good people. The alley oop and finished off by Chauncey Hardy. Sacred Heart did a good job of defending. Lou Radford works hard, winds up with an air ball, but the bucket and the foul by Clifton Spiller. Last year, maybe the greatest and most exciting NEC game in our television history as Mudwilder sticks his third three of the day. He's got nine. Corner, and there's Smith wide open on the left corner. Chauncey Hardy answers from three. He's got 16 Team points for Hardy. And the Pioneers have grabbed a one-point lead, but Lou Radford regains the lead for the Seahawks on his... Ramat Sahan back in the game, number 15 for Sacred Heart at 6'9", the tallest player on the court. Chauncey Hardy sticks another three. He's got 21 points. Big you play. Handley goes glass and played pretty big there. They work it around the perimeter for Litke's three. His first basket of the day, shoots threes, and then they give it up. The long throw for Munwildler, and he lays it home. That's not comfortable for him. He usually wants to shoot from behind the arc. Loose ball picked up by Henley. Gibson, the floater, the bucket, and the foul. With Last night, he's done a terrific job with that program. Hardy for three. He has 24 points. He definitely, he, he can make that shot, but it's a little early in the possession. Drummond took five steps, but no call. Pops and hits. Drummond with 10. He fights for it. Gerald Thompson for three. Gerald, that's his first bucket. Sorry, Paul, that's his first bucket. He hasn't been playing a whole lot. That's a big he answer. To take the lead. They go to Handley, and it's rejected by Munweiler. Drummond, Radford on the cleanup, and he's got eight. Thompson. Asin thought about three, it goes to Henley for the slam. There's the double team, kicks it for Thompson to the baseline, fires and hits. Jerome Thompson has made two big baskets in the second half. Wow, that's a big time, big time contribution from the bench. Well, the possession hour right now favors Sacred Heart. They've got the ball, and Joey Henley has given them a six-point lead. Ryan Litke came in during that last timeout to replace Hardy. The steal by Drummond. He will go all the way and smack it down. 12 for Drummond. Oh, well, out for Zeski. 12 seconds to play. Knocked away from Mudweiler, and it's Pioneers basketball. Deflected by Chauncey Hardy. Tom Connecticut, Chauncey Hardy. Can't get that one. Radford the rebound. Six seconds to go. The Seahawks need to hurry. They are down by four. Jamal Smith for three. Doesn't get it, and it is over. The Pioneers have survived 68 to 64. Already see scholar athletes Alyssa Apo of Sacred Heart and Casey Stokes of Wagner. Apo, an undeclared major with a 3.73 GPA, and Stokes, a sociology major, at 3.75. Nice work in the classroom, Joe. Good student athletes. It's a great part of college basketball. Hey, how about during the 1979 Wagner NIT team here at the Spiro Center? And Jared Greenberg sat down with their coach earlier to talk about some memories. All right, Paul, thanks so much here at Wagner, the 30th anniversary of the 1978-79 team that did some unbelievable things, and the man responsible for that squad, sitting to the right of me, P.J. Carlissimo. P.J., a lot of people, when they think about your coaching career, talk about the NBA and Seton Hall, but really, this is where you got your name as a coach. No, this is where it started for sure. Uh, it was my first uh, opportunity, a Division I head coach for Larry Jarashati, and uh, it was, I had six great years here. I love living on Staten Island, and we had, we were really blessed. We had some, particularly the early teams uh, before the Big East Conference. People forget that was before the Big East Conference, and we were kind of all uh, lobbed together in those days, St. John's and 
Fordham was even before Rutgers went to the Eastern Eight. We were all in one big, the old ECAC Metro. It's the same name still, right. but it was a different group in those days. And we had great players. This team, this team in particular, the 78-79 team, we had two or three players that would have been good players anywhere I've ever coached. And we'll get into that team, but before we do, many people didn't see it coming because you were the first Division I coach here. They took it from a Division Three program, and really, you took a risk coming down from New Hampshire to take over a program that really wasn't expected to do much. Well, it, the expectations weren't high. We, we had lost for a little bit. There had been a great tradition here. Obviously, there were some really good Wagner teams earlier than that, but they had come upon tough times, and, and you know a lot of people wondered going to Division One. but it was, a, it was a, a perfect time. It was a great opportunity. We got some really good players, inherited some good players from John Goodwin, uh, Henry Dillard, and Mark Dodon, and then we picked up a couple of uh, Howard Tompkins transferred down, was playing for Jim Calhoun at that time at Northeastern. Uh, we signed Jamie Campagli, who was the leading scorer in the school's history for a long time, and then we got a great player out of West Chester, Damon Yeiser, and I mean that group also got a, a point guard from uh, up in Waterbury, Connecticut, Stevie Johnson. I'm telling you, that group could that group could win 20 anywhere, anytime. Uh, it was really a very, very good basketball. Well, team. it was a special year. You beat Alabama, then the signature win. It's ranked as the second greatest game in Wagner basketball history. Knocking off a school, you'd go on to coach to a national title game. Tell me about beating Seton Hall and what that meant for this program that year in 78, 79. Well, that, that one really legitimized. I mean, so, uh, the Alabama win was unbelievable. Alabama was highly ranked. We beat them over in the Lapchick tournament at St. John's, but it wasn't here. Uh, the Seton Hall game was, was obviously a great traditional rival here uh, in this gym. The gym looked a little different in those <laughs> days. And uh, I think it was a double or triple overtime game, and it was a great picture in the advance. And Billy, Billy Raftery was literally parallel to the floor. He jumped up in the air, and Hadi Mahan and the coaches, he was like this. They're ready to catch him. I think he was a little upset at one of the one of the officials' calls, but uh, it was it was just a real special night. And so many people, uh, for as small as the gym was uh, over the years, I think I've run into 5,000 people that claim they were here that night, and I think we could only fit barely a thousand in there. But uh, Jimmy Valvano always said this was the toughest place he ever played. You know, up there, what's the Hall of Fame room right now, was the batting cage during the day, and at night it was the where the, they call it the animal section, and the kids used to sit there and heat up the pennies and fire them at the visiting coaches. And uh, V talked for years about what an impossible place this was to play. So uh, probably the night at, at Seton Hall was as good as it got. You talk about Bill Raftery at Seton Hall, Jim Valvano at Iona, Jim Calhoun at Northeastern, Jimmy Beheim just starting at Syracuse. I mean, the amount of coaches that would go on to win national titles that were in this era all playing each other during that time, pretty special. Well, we all, you know, we all play. Everybody started. It's funny. They're the only guys left right now. They call them the dinosaurs, the guys coaching now. Gary Williams was at American University. He was in that right. Lapchick tournament. So you had Gary Williams at, at American and later on assistant at BC. Jimmy Olvano was at Iona. Mike Krzyzewski was at uh, Army. Army. Yeah. Rick Pitino was at Boston University. Jim Calhoun was at Northeastern. We were all, you know, every, everybody was here. Of course, Lou Carnesecca was at, was at St. John's, and it was, a, it was a great, great time. And, again, we were all, it was before the league started, so everybody was thrown into the same pot. And all those guys came through this, uh, came through. I don't know if we ever got Louie to come into this building, but I think everybody else played here. We played them every year. Well, Coach, you were telling me before that this is your first time in the brand-new uh, Spiro Center, only a couple of years old. And tell me the differences and the memories you have of the old Sutter gym compared to this, this state-of-the-art facility. Well, this was a great, this, you know, what was Sutter Gym, of course, named after Pastor Sutter. And then Herb Sutter, his son, was the athletic director, longtime athletic director here, was a very close friend of my father's. And uh, this is, is so great that Coach Mike Dean has this facility uh, and, all you know, all the student athletes here uh, at Wagner. It's not just that it's a nice basketball court, the weight rooms, the offices upstairs for the football program uh, for Walt Hamlin. Walt was assistant football coach right. when I was here. And then when I left, he succeeded me as athletic director. I hired Walt as the football coach, as a matter of fact. Not a bad job. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, he was, it was an easy choice. He was very special. We knew when we had, I didn't know that he, to be honest with you, I didn't think he'd stay this long. I'm, I'm really happy for the school that he did, but he's a very talented coach and a great administrator. Coach, we only have a few seconds left, and I, I want to get your thoughts as we're joined by P.J. Carlissimo. So many people disappointed that you're not a coach anymore, disappointingly let go by the Oklahoma City Thunder, and we want to know, are you going to get back into coaching? Well, I'm going to do your profession for a little bit, doing some radio. Don't take my job. No, doing some radio for Westwood One and some TV for Fox and hopefully the playoffs uh, for, for one of the uh, NBA things. But then we'll wait and see what happens. Uh, you hate to say it, but there'll be some jobs open in the league come the spring or the summer and uh, like to get back in it and, and stay in the NBA. And uh, it's been a great run, and it's a, it's a good opportunity, and it, that just goes with the territory. Well, Coach, happy 30th anniversary. Great, Jared. It's really good to be back here. Thank you very much. That's P.J. Carlissimo celebrating the 30th anniversary of the 78-79 team here at Wagner College. We go back to Paul Dettino.
Well, thank you, Jared. And it is always good to talk to P.J. Colissimo. And did you notice, by the way, he had a midnight green Wagner tie on.